Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening. Today I've got another landscape photography editing video, and today I'm gonna take this raw file and turn it into this picture right here. And I actually don't know how the picture is gonna look like because I'm adding these pictures while editing the video. So you're actually in an advantage. Anyways, let's go to editing and do just my basic stuff. Raise the shadows all the way. You can see here how much detail we suddenly get out of the shadows. By the way, this was a bridge shot at Silichikon or something like that. A little village on the Isle of Skye really just has a nice bridge. I mean, the landscape around it is pretty nice too, but the main attraction is this bridge. And I've took this on a tripod, ISO 118mm f8 and 125th of a second. So the next thing I'm gonna do is definitely lower the highlights here. I think I'm gonna go down 100%, then definitely bring up the whites, make sure nothing is clipped there as usual then bring down the blacks to something like that. I kind of like when it's a little bit clipped in the blacks into contrast. I actually really like the look of plus contrast. However, I feel like the overall image is a little bit too dark, so let me raise the exposure here while looking at the histogram until we have a nice exposure. Yeah, I think that one, maybe there, works pretty good. Then in terms of clarity, let's just play around with this slider as well. Now in this photo I think like plus clarity would work pretty good, however I definitely don't want to overdo that. So I think I'm just going to raise it by like 20. And in terms of color temperature, let's see here, I mean I'm really not sure, I kind of like the very bluish water color. But at the same time, I kind of like the warm tones in the grass. But I think I'm just going to leave it where it was for now and maybe add some split toning later or some local adjustments with some color to the tint. Just playing around with this one. But I don't think I'm going to do anything there. Just reset it by double clicking on it. And with that said, we're already done with the basics adjustments. Actually, vibrance and saturation. As you surely know, I like vibrance way much more than saturation because it adds color way more subtle. And I actually think I'm gonna add some vibrance here in this shot. Maybe around 20. Down here at the tonal curve, do my regular stuff, just raising the highlight slider. I'm definitely not gonna do it as much as I do in some of my other pictures, but a little bit will still help. Then just playing around with the rest of the sliders and stick with whatever looks best. Maybe that one a bit up, but the shadows down in return. Yeah, I kind of like that look. Down to HSL, I think I'm gonna play around with these. Just grab this little pin pointer, go on the water, and like go up and down with your mouse until you like the color. That looks absolutely terrible. I think I might go a little bit towards the brighter side here, towards the more light blue side. And for the greens, I actually like the greens. Maybe just add a little bit more green tones here. Saturation, doing the same as I did with you. Maybe. Actually, I think I like it how it was. And to the greens. I think I'm just gonna leave that there as well. Down here at the luminance, the last tool on the HSL module. Doing the same thing, I'm not gonna change anything with the blues. And with the greens, I think I might bring up the greens a bit. Yeah, that definitely looks a bit better. Then let's go down to split toning. I might add some warmth here. I definitely like split toning, especially for sunsets and sunrises. But let me just play around with different colors and saturations here. Maybe towards the orange a bit. Just a little bit of warmth into the whole picture. Maybe shadows would work even better. Let's see here. They definitely have a bigger effect, but 
I feel like it's almost a bit too much, so I think I'm just going to stick with a little bit of plus orange in the highlights, and I'm just going to leave the shadows at zero. Then down here to the detail tool, as always, before I do anything, just zoom in one to one, and see if there's any sharpening needed. I mean, the picture is pretty sharp, but often you can get out even more sharpness just by adding some sharpening here. So I think... Rogue slider. I think I'm gonna add around 50. I think that works pretty good. Yeah, everything else is kind of too much. Then let's zoom back out again. Just bring the masking slider to the right while holding down the old key. Everything that's white is going to be sharpened and everything that's black is not going to be sharpened. So I think I'm gonna stick there. I really don't mind if the water gets sharpened here because the water has a lot of texture in the photo. So it really doesn't introduce any noise. And speaking of noise, noise reduction, let's zoom in one to one again. I mean, there's really not much noise in this picture. I think it, it's not really needed to add any noise reduction. However, there is some purple and white color, sorry, purple and green color noise in the picture, especially in these dark tones right here. I'm not sure how well you can see it on YouTube, but I'm definitely gonna add some color reduction, some color noise reduction. Here, just bring that to the right until I don't see any green and purple sensor noise anymore. That definitely is a huge part, I mean, it's such an easy tool, incredibly effective, especially if you print your picture or display it on like a large display or anything like that. Then here at the lens corrections, just do my regular thing, profile correction, check my lens, in this case the 18-55 to kit lens, and it will get rid of all of the distortion and vignetting but I'm gonna bring down the vignetting once again because I like vignetting in my picture. I really just wanna get rid of the distortion. And to the color lastly here, just click on this little remove chromatic aberration and it will get rid of all of the chromatic aberration on the high contrast edges if there is any. For example, right here. Here's without and here's with. So that definitely helps to give your picture a better look and make it look more clean. Then to effects down here, let's bring down some amount of post crop vignetting. I really like to add vignetting to my shots, especially on those kind of moody and darker shots, because it helps to give one mood and also two it helps to give more attention towards the center of the image just be sure you don't overdo that otherwise it will look absolutely terrible and definitely never add plus vignetting so for this photo i think i'm gonna add somewhere around 20 which is on the heavier side actually but I think that works best for here. Now the other sliders here, midpoint roundness, you could uh, fine tune your vignetting, but it's really such a small difference in your photo. Grain, never touch grain. Grain looks absolutely terrible. As you can see here, it's pretty much a slider with how many percent would you like to ruin your picture? Would you like to ruin your beautiful picture by 50% or 100%? Well, anyways, so zero grain, never mess with that. Then down here to the last global adjustment, the camera calibration. First of all, profile. This will just change your color and a bit of the exposure of the overall photo. So just play around with all of these and choose whatever looks best. This is way over the top. This is kind of too neutral. I like this one. Let's see, camera standard, I like this even better, let's go with dope standard and see how that looks. Camera faithful, I mean I kinda like this too, it's usually really not a big difference with these profiles, so it's really the tough choice you have to choose whatever you like best. I think I might even go with camera standard here, just because I feel like it adds a little bit more dynamic over the overall picture compared to Adobe standard. 
Yeah, I think I'm gonna go with Adobe stand camera standard, sorry. So we're done with the profiles and down here at the primary colors. I'm just gonna do that and speed up the footage. See you in a second. Alright, so I'm back after messing around with the color sliders. Here is without any camera profile change and without any slider adjustment. And here's with. So definitely just play around with these and choose whatever works best for your photo. And with that said, we're already done with the global adjustments. So now I'm gonna go to the local adjustments and I feel like the sky is a bit too bright. So I'm just gonna grab a graduated filter here and drag it over the sky. You wanna make sure that you always, when you use a graduated filter, that you don't have a super harsh edge. Otherwise, if you'd like change uh, exposure, it will look very unnatural. So make sure you have a very soft edge. Something like that. Now this is a bit too much exposure down, so I think I'm just gonna stick around there. Might as well play around with the contrast of the sky, but I feel like it's fine where it was, and the clarity was also fine. So I think the sky already looks pretty good. Here's before and here's after. I mean it's really a very subtle difference but it definitely does that to the picture and I feel like that's something that many people would just oversee or overlook. You know, just play around with everything you can so you end up with the best possible picture. Then I feel like the top right portion of the sky is a bit too dark so I'm just gonna grab another graduated filter and just kinda drag it over the top right portion of the sky and add back some exposure in there. Yeah, I think that works better. Now, I already like the picture, but it's still kind of boring. I didn't have the best lighting. As you can see, the entire foreground pretty much is in a shadow. So what I'm gonna do is add some dodge and burning and just create some interest, bring back some life into the picture. I'm gonna do that with the radial filter, just grab one here, make sure the feathers to 100, invert the mask, blah blah blah. If you would like to learn more about starch and burning, just click on this little video right here, or if you're on a mobile device, click on the info card, the little exclamation mark in the top right corner of the video. Anyways, I think I'm not gonna skip dodge and burning here, I'm just gonna show you what I'm gonna do. So I'm just gonna create some ellipse shaped radial filters here, increase the exposure and I think I'm even gonna add some color that really helps to give uh, the image a bit more interest even more than just pure exposure. And I'm just gonna go over this bridge here, right click duplicate and kinda drag it over some different parts of the image. Maybe one over here this could even use a bit more plus exposure. Duplicate this one again. Maybe like a bright spot here in the water. Something like that. Duplicate this one again. Another one there. Really just play around with these and end up with whatever looks best to your picture. Especially if you're like first time hearing about dodge and burning. I definitely suggest you to play around with these as much as you can in all kinds of different pictures. Maybe some more plus exposure over there. Duplicate this one once again. Make this house right there a bit brighter. And any other spots that I want to make brighter? I don't really think so. Maybe a little bit of these rocks right here. Make it pretty small just drag some over these rocks kind of create some interest in these rocks right here and I think that already looks pretty cool maybe some more under this bridge just like that and one more over here maybe over there 
and one more over there. And in terms of plus exposure, I'm really happy with the, these right now, these radial filters, but I'm gonna add some negative exposure filters as well, just to give even more contrast and interest to the picture. So I'm just gonna create another radial filter here and just go over the like, kind of dark parts and make them even darker. It's really a very selective form of contrast. So maybe one over here. This one is kind of too much, so let's bring up the exposure a bit. I definitely think one more over there could work. Duplicate this one again and make this whole part of the river right here a bit darker. Something like that. And right click duplicate this one again. Right click duplicate, drag it over another dark area of the picture. Maybe someone, some filter over there. And I think that looks pretty good. Now I'm gonna go back to the plus exposure radial filters. By the way, this is really a kind of time consuming part of your editing process. So this is why I often like to just speed it up in my other videos. But this in this video I really thought I'm gonna explain you to you what stash and burning I do and you know kind of tell you what impact it has on your picture. So I think that works pretty well. Maybe make this rock right here a bit brighter too. And the last one over here. Now I think I'm done with dodge and burning. Let's see without any dodge and burning. And here's with. Now it looks very obvious at first, but believe me, once you look at the picture for like a minute, it will look totally natural if you haven't overdone it. Again, here without and here with. So you can see it just adds a little bit more lighting, a little bit more interest, a little bit more complexity into your picture. And with that said, I think I'm done with the overall picture. I really like how it looks. So as always, let's see where we started at with the raw file. Here's the raw file without any editing to it. I mean, really kind of dark, a bit underexposed, and the biggest part are definitely the shadows. But this is what we've made out of it in just about 50 minutes, I'd say. Yeah, I definitely like this way better, and I think it's a pretty cool picture. As always, I want to thank you very much for watching. If you've enjoyed the video, please leave me a thumbs up, that definitely helps me out a lot. And if you would like to see more videos just like this one, and other Lightroom guides, Lightroom tutorials, landscape photo critiques, and all kind of amazing stuff, be sure to subscribe. Anyways, enough of me talking, I just want to wish you an amazing day and take care.